<clears throat> Hello, people. This is the real Big Boss Calvin 83. Big Boss Calvin 1983. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I gotta speak on this. Um, as you see right here, um, this is this art. This report is like like almost six months old. But what surprises me is how a lot of you red pill guys, you so-called red pillars, and the manosphere, you so-called manosphere clowns. Yeah, I'm calling y'all clowns. Because if you're about for men's advocates for men's issues and you want things to change about women, you wanna you know, you want women to change their behavior, you want accountability, especially from policy legally. You went, I mean, if you support women having choice, some of y'all don't believe that women should have choice. Some of y'all believe in Sharia law. Well, I don't, I don't, actually, I take that back. A lot of y'all guys don't fuck with Sharia law. And I actually, me personally, I do believe in Sharia law. It's needed. But see, you hoe-ass you ho, you, you ho males want to have your cake and eat it too. You, so you are the heifers that you complain about. You want to be able to be whores yourself. And I'm against men being whores too. Especially when y'all crying about false allegations and fraternity fraud, unplanned pregnancy, reproductive rights, or she don't wanna wife, she don't wanna she don't wanna claim you as her husband and she want, and you know wanna keep you away from seeing your child, you know, and then talk about child support, you don't have a say if she wants to unalive the child with abortion, right? Even though abortion is somewhat over overturned. <laughs> this is what we need to be talking about. I mean, I'm not telling people what they can can't talk about on the con, but my thing is if you're speaking about issues, if you speak about issues of the black community and stuff like that, um, we really don't get to pick and choose what we want to talk about and don't want to talk about. A lot of y'all just want to push narratives because y'all got unresolved issues. I'm not saying... I didn't make those mistakes when I started being on YouTube um, back in 2009. And I've been on you, I've been making content on men's issues, speaking about my journey of being, being awakened and conscious and, you know, rev black revolutionary too. Speaking about anti black misandry. Speaking about how misandry creates misogyny. I've been doing this for like 12 years, y'all. And I have never, I mean, I have some people send me my flowers, but I've never gotten the support compared to guys who just want to just make bread and just, hey, if you want to make money, but my thing is, are we going to get reform? There's no point in talking about female nature, gold diggers, she's delusional, and talk about women being violent, there are women out here doing violent criminals, women, women demonizing men. If we don't, or if we're not in a position of power to take the power from them and take the power from this government, y'all don't want to do, many of y'all don't want to, you're not ready for that. But I digress. Let me get started. Uh, here's the thing. Um, sex craze UK grannies warned against visiting this African nation. I want you to pay attention to that part. Sex craze grannies, sex craze UK grannies warned against visiting African nations. Like, there, it's like what they try to do on this one was try to flip the script of that these women are victims even though they are predators paying for, basically doing sex tourism, but yet you wanna talk about sex tourism when it comes to men who traveled abroad and overseas. Yet you wanna demonize black men who are passport bros, you know, who wanna just get away and have fun and get their rocks off. But see, black and we as melanated men, we're not in a position to do that. Yes, there's some criticisms. I do agree with some of the criticism, and I disagree with a lot of the criticism. Why is it that black men don't have the freedom of movement to do what white males, Asian males have done? Why is it that, we, but, but here's the thing, black women have traveled. Black women have been celebrating for traveling abroad. White women, these cave bitches, these cave hoes, these pale cave bitches have been traveling 
with their own money, with their husband's money, doing girls' trips. But that's never an issue when white women do shit. And they're predators. It's never an issue with that. Explain that to me, y'all. The desires of some sexually active UK grannies have forced a popular African destination to change its policy on tourism. So we got a lot of these young males, these young men, these underage males being taken advantage of, regardless if they entertain it or not, they're still being exploited. But see, nobody want to have this conversation. You pro-blacks disappoint me. Y'all refuse to address the misandry that's part of black culture, especially in America, Kaka. Internationally too, but mainly in America, Kaka. Though tourism can be, though tourism can bring many advantages to developing nations, even though the nation was, was already developed, it was colonized and robbed, where, where it's destitute. But see, I digress. There are, there are also a number of downsides. Each nation has its own unique set of challenges, but the problems experienced in the Gambia's flagship industry involve UK grannies and their insuitable appetites. Why don't you just say they're hoes? Sexual appetites. Why are UK grannies being told to avoid Gambia? Why are they being told that? Since the late 1990s, the Gambia has been the destination of choice for oldest British women seeking sun, sea, and saucy shenanigans. Well, but see, if, if it was a man, it was men doing this, y'all would call them predators. Y'all would call them pervs. Y'all would have a negative connotation. Y'all call them pedophiles. Y'all call them something mis with the misandric talking points, dogs, and they're taking advantage of these women. These women know what they're doing. They, they target these, a lot of times they target these dudes who are Taurus. But see, don't want to have that real conversation. But what do you know? You never try. I have lived overseas when I was a child, but I never traveled overseas as an adult and really spent time, you know, getting to, to have those type of adventures. I, I mean, maybe, I mean, that's, that's on the bucket list, but to me, I'm not on no, you know, if I want some, you know, some, some feet, some, some, you know, some, want that tail, that tail, no, you know, but to me, I'm looking for something bigger when I go overseas. To me, to me, I can get that anywhere. But, you know, people can do them. So it's called saucy shenanigans when you got old female predators, sexual predators, hoes, when they travel overseas. You got black women who travel overseas. They get their rocks off, talk and brag, being all wild. They even do nasty stuff to each other, to not just men, but other women too, other women and girls. But I don't get talked about. See, it's also shenanigans, but if y'all do a sex tourism as exploitation, y'all your hoes, your promiscuous, you're degrading women. But when but when are women gonna be accountable for the, the the fact that they choose to degrade themselves and prostitute themselves? Regardless of the circumstances, they know what they're doing. Some of them know what they're doing most more often than you think. But I digress. The tourists have made a habit of visiting the West African country to pay young adult males, and I'll even say underage males, for sex. <laughs> Creating a very seedy market within a market. The men who take part of these arrange arrangements have been known as, has been known as Bumpsters, uh, yes. You, you see the moment the misandry is so fucked up out here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. So fucked up out here. The Gambian has become a sex tourist haven. This has carried on the past twenty years. A Cohort UK grannies are now 
regular visitors here. It's not necessary because uh, <coughs> because they enjoy the vast tapestry tapestry of Gambian culture. The country is small in size, provides home to roughly 2.5 million citizens. However, the coastal location year-round, hot temperatures, the foundations to exploit an economic gold, economic gold mine. Sadly, some visitors has some 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 visitors. This has turned into a full-blown sex tourism. And this is how this is going with, when it comes to these first world these 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 people who are these foreigners of these first world nations. That's what goes on. But we're so disconnected um, in this in this in these first world countries. We are undateable, but we'll go overseas to just be toxic. It's just really fucked up out here. And the government is now ready to take a stand against lustful travelers. Sex crazed UK granny still to stay away. Cloudy tourists needed. Oh, uh, Bukar Kamara, the director of the Gambian Tourism Board, told a local pub publication earlier this week that they are now seeking quality tourists only. The top officials say that tourists must now come to enjoy culture rather than indulge in, in seedy sexual arrangements. And I'll bet you, even though those women are old, older, they're getting pregnant. <laughs> that's what's, that, hey, you know, that seed is strong, you know what I'm saying? And just because a woman, woman's older don't mean she can't get knocked up. Let's just keep it real. What we want is quality tourists, tourists that come to enjoy, enjoy the country and the culture, but not tourists just, just that just that come just for sex. The government would welcome tourists interested in positive side of the country, not those who want to just come for sex. So y'all rather demonize black men as a whole who travel, but when you got these heifers who do who who travel and actually do the same thing, or I would say they do it more often because it's easy to, for them to get dizzy anytime they want. That, but see, nobody wants to talk. Y'all, a lot of you women don't want to recognize that if you want dizzy, you can you know you can get anywhere. There's women who have told me point blank, I can get laid anytime I want. Even the woman was a cougar. Even if the woman was in her sixty. But my thing is, when, but, but can you get a husband? But that, then there's crickets. This is why, even though I don't agree, even though me personally, it's funny that, that men, there are some men who will be celebrated, but it's so funny when a man says, I want more than one wife, he's demonized. So you okay with dudes being promiscuous and sleeping with a bunch of random women that he'll never see ever again. And some of he might, you know, some of those women might be carrying his child. She might not know who the father is because some of these women just, or, you know, she might be carrying that child and nowhere to be found. Or even if he do, he, the man tries to claim her, it's a problem because she may not want to fuck with him on on that type of long term time, you know she may not want to be his wife, which is more all happens more often than y'all care to acknowledge. But if a man says I want more than one wife, a black man who says I want more than one wife, y'all got an issue with that. I don't understand. You okay with a man sleeping with sixty women, smash pumping and dumping? But if a man says I want to take these women, uh, like ten women, as wives or ten or more women as wives, you have a problem with that. But y'all don't have an issue when white males do it out in Utah, out in Colorado. Y'all don't have it out in Wyoming. Y'all don't have a problem with that, especially out in Utah. Y'all don't have a problem with white males internationally do this shit. 
You don't have a problem. Arab males do that shit. Y'all don't have it when, when non-black males want to do that, have more than one wife and have multiple kids. It's celebrated. When a black man, he's, he's the most, he's the scum, of, scum of the earth. White women can travel overseas, be the biggest hoes. Nobody got an issue with that. Unless, you know, you know, the country got an issue with that. But that's not talked about. Black women can sleep around, may not be able to sleep around as these cave hoes, but when black women do the girl trip, all these women are undateable and undesirable, and they're demonized as prostitutes. White women can get a pass. Non-black women can get more of a pass, but... But see, black women can still get leniency. But when men travel, but white males can travel, it's demonized. But white women don't to shut the fuck up. But when black men travel overseas, it's now a problem with the passport bros. It don't make no damn sense that we got a double fucking set. Misandry. When are y'all going to start calling out black misandry? Dr. T. Hassan. And I'm like, yo, when I get my, when I get, I got, I'm doing for a lot of shit. I, I would, Dr. T. Hassan, I fuck with him. I would love to be more involved with his projects out in California. And there's other men do, who are doing work and actually trying to get a revolution started. But, you know, the real revolution is attacking this anti-black misandry. Y'all just want to talk about female nature, but you're, you don't want to deal with the root cause of female nature. You don't want to actually get reform that will knock it out. Now, you may not be able to stop the toxic hoes, but see, a lot of you dudes don't want to change your shit. Some of you males just want, y'all think if you can debate with women and pull up statistics and, and just argue with them or try to sweet talk your way, because some of you guys who call women 304s, hoes, and bitches, y'all want to deal with these 304s. Y'all want to, sometimes when y'all be debating and stuff, I know what goes on behind social media. You don't think I be meeting women off of social media? I met my share, but that, but that was more in the foot fetish community. Yeah, sometimes these beasts are not beasts. There's why some female content creators don't get called out when it comes to the manosphere. You got a nigga wearing a wig like O'Shea acting, you know, doing menstrual shit. You got fine Lexi. I mean, I mean, yeah, I'm gonna call some of you guys out. Hey, you know, I mean, I mean, defending Joe Rogan racist ass brother, really. On top of that, I heard he got. A, I mean, I noticed he got another child, right? Is he going to claim claim that wife? Take, is he going to take that baby mama as his wife? But you want to talk about other YouTubers, I'm not going to say. That got multiple baby mamas. You know, Cynthia G, Cynthia G became baby mama number six. Y'all call him out, but when it comes to y'all, y'all have a different set of rules. This is a problem. Nobody wants to be held to a valid standard. No, y'all want to pick and choose who you want to enforce rules on. Y'all don't want, see, this is a thing. Y'all want to pick and choose when y'all want to be equal to each other. But when it comes to equal accountability across the board, none of y'all want to fuck with that. Only a few. Because the reason why I fuck with equal accountability across the board, because of my thing, without personal accountability, we're fucked up as people. We are too toxic. This is why personal accountability is necessary. Because I just can't hold myself accountable if you out here doing fuck shit. I can navigate well with personal accountability and responsibility, but when it comes to this toxic bullshit, that's why we got, that's why I take, if you got to pay three times the rent. That's why you got all these evictions. That's why this government can do all this shit. But y'all want to talk about relationships and all this other shit. You don't understand that how policy affects relationships. How capitalism, the reason why misandry go is the way it is because capitalism Benefits from oppressing men. We're disposable. But y'all don't want to have those real conversations.